Do you ever feel like you've been told by your PT and or your chiropractor to keep stretching that pain will eventually go away? Meanwhile, you look at your shoulder and it's moving around like crazy. That ball in the socket just is no longer in the socket. It's moving around freely. It's got a mind of its own. If that sounds like you, you need to listen up. Maybe you feel like you have very good shoulder range of motion, even though you barely do any stretching. Maybe you've been called hypermobile by your doctor or even double jointed by nurses, friends, or family. I'm here to tell you that it's okay to be double jointed or hypermobile. It doesn't mean you're abnormal. It doesn't mean you're at the end of the road and your shoulder is just screwed. And I'm gonna show you that by showing you a common example of someone, a recent client actually came on board with us to work one-to-one -one in our coaching program who went through an assessment with me and did this exact exercise that we're gonna go through today in the video and got very good improvement from doing this one exercise alone because it was the right one for him and it turned on the proper muscles to make him feel where he should feel in the proper areas without any pain. No, I just, uh, I just feel the instability in my right shoulder. That's how we feel in there? That's the hardest I can go. So it doesn't really want to go beyond that. If I do, it just feels like it's, it's really tight. Is you're going to kind of lean your body forward towards me. And then as you do that, you're going to pick your whole body up as you swing your arm up and forward towards the camera. All right. So it's like, so you push through your elbow, swing up. Yes. And then you end up here. Then you come down slow and controlled back to the way you started. So swing it all the way down, back slow, 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 slow. There you go. Make sure that wrist goes all the way down. Good. Good? Yeah, I do feel more of my, uh, the delta in front is now actually like working. Okay, good, good. This is a good sign. So we're turning on the right things. You're starting to feel like the right areas activate. Oh, baby, look at that. It is, it is shaky, but yeah, it's better. <laughs> Way better. Awesome, I mean, look at your motion. Yeah, it's a lot better. Yeah, 100%, good. I, I wanna ask you, like on a scale of like zero to 100, from us doing the initial assessment to the retesting, like how much imp improvement do you feel like you got on, on the scale where 100 is really good, zero is none? I'm going to say between 80 and 90. Oh, yeah, 80 and 90. That's huge. Well, if you're like Matthew there, who just went through the DNS five to seven month transition exercise and got such good improvement from it, and you experience a lot of clicking, catching instability, and you feel it in weird areas of your shoulder that you just feel like is not right, today's topic is going to help you. And it's going to do that by helping you reduce that clicking and popping sensation that you commonly get in your shoulder when you lift overhead, put a shirt on, right? Reach for things behind your back. And it's going to help you by not doing any stretching at all. Now, the exercise we're gonna focus on is again, called the five to seven month transition. It's an excellent exercise that helps strengthen an often weak rotator cuff by turning on the proper muscles. And it's very good for hypermobile or double jointed individuals. Now, pump the brakes. You might be asking, what the heck is hypermobile? What is double jointed? I never heard either of these terms. Hypermobile simply means they have more than the normal joint range of motion. It means that this glenohumeral joint, which is the ball that sits in the socket here, is just moving around too much excessively okay, where it shouldn't be moving as much because the ligaments, which are these right here, all in color, they're just too lax, meaning they're not nice and small like this with good tension on them. They're overstretched, like stretch out rubber bands that you've been playing with for 30 or 40 minutes. Now, listen up, we're gonna dive into the exercise and I'm gonna explain how to do it properly so you get the most bang for your buck. And it's called five to seven month transition because this is actually developmental exercise that you learn as a baby when you're growing up. Pretty cool, right? Now, I commonly recommend based on where I learned this from and the courses that I took and from using with people in the past, that you only do two to three sets of five to six repetitions. You don't wanna do more than that and you don't need to. Now, let me get rid of this. For this exercise, you should be able to see it here, is we wanna start laying on your injured side with both shoulders stacked over each other. You want your elbow at 90 degrees in line with your shoulder and your wrists all the way back touching in contact with the ground if you can make it that way. And we want to actually push into full external rotation, which is where that fist is all the way down. If you can't touch the ground, that is completely fine. You can still do this with your hypermobile. You should be able to easily without your shoulder popping up off the ground. Now, from this position, you want to engage your abs, make sure your knees are bent, bring your top shoulder forward over your bottom shoulder, and then come all the way up and over, coming into internal rotation so the wrist finishes in line with the elbow. And then slowly, keyword slowly, reverse that position, coming back down to start and use your abdominals and your rotator cuff muscles to control that lower. Now, most people will do this incorrectly on the way down. This is called the eccentric portion. It is very important to do it slow and controlled to develop a good neurodevelopmental sequence there so you can build up good tension in that rotator cuff and actually strengthen that key area. Most people plop down, they do it too quick. And if you do that, you get nothing out of it. It's pointless to do. And sometimes it'll even irritate the shoulder and, and increase your pain. Now you wanna go through and do this. If it's painful, again, you can restrict your range of motion a little bit, or if you wanna modify, you can use your opposite arm to assist by pushing off of the ground to help you a little bit to make the exercise a little bit easier to do. So give that exercise a shot. Let me know in the comments down below if you, if you actually felt good, if it felt bad, 
um, or if you've done this before, most people haven't. This is something that's not super common, but we use it a lot during our assessments like you saw with Matthew at the beginning. And we get really good results from people with weak rotator cuffs, people with excessive mobility. And if you're a weightlifter suffering from not being able to do any overhead pressing, bench pressing, or it just sucks putting a t-shirt on, I'd love to help you by sending our free training on the NTS method that we use with our clients like Matthew to get pain free. All I need you to do is just comment with the word shoulder down below and I'll send it right over. And lastly, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe so you don't miss any of our new exercise videos, our YouTube shorts coming out, as well as our Instagram reels and Facebook reels. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.